You can do it. You, okay. You can do my intro. Oh no, what's your intro? <laughs> Greetings one and all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use that for the cold open. Okay. <laughs> Greetings, one and all, and welcome to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, I'm Noah. And I'm Tom. Uh, I'm the one that belongs on this channel. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, as you can see, we are together in the same room, finally. A three-year friendship cultivated by YouTube has uh, culminated, yeah, similar words, uh, in this person-to-person -person meeting. And yeah, we're doing, I'm having so much fun here in Oklahoma with Noah and his fiance Alyssa. And their dog, Tucker, who is asleep on the bed. Hopefully my saying his name won't wake him up and disturb the video. But uh, yes, for now, we are doing a... Uh, I wanted to do this in person with Noah because... Uh, so it's kind of an official passing of the baton, if you will, of at least the name of this feature that he was doing. He did three installments, I believe it was, on your channel. Probably. Possibly more to come. I, I can't make any promises on his behalf, just... <laughs> no. <laughs> and it's, you know, the concept itself is not, probably not really anything super elevated. I mean, it's, you know, a YouTuber talking about an album that they really love that means a lot to them personally. But uh, I searched and searched for a good title for the feature and could not find anything that didn't, that wasn't already used or sounded stupid. So I am officially stealing the title album diaries from Noah. So and, and so this is his his official endorsement of me taking the title from Correct. him. Correct. So. And what better album for us to do it with than Bleacher's Strange Desire? Yeah, it's an album that means a lot to both of us. Yes. And uh, so uh, since you're a guest on my channel, do you want to go first and talk about uh, how you discovered the album and what it means to you? Of and course. Um, so for this album, and I'm sure I've talked about this on the channel. I can't remember why I talked about it or when I talked about it, um, but I'm sure I did. I, for a long time, always was like your, your stereotypical, like, thought old music was the only good music. New music was bad, and uh, this is just what I was raised on. And so, Not necessarily a bad opinion to have, by the way. <laughs> I, I refused. To, I, I just thought that all modern music was terrible. Um, I never tried any. Um, and then one day I had a good friend um, who was, we were in our, in our journalism class, we were doing some work, uh, and so she was listening to music, she handed me uh, one of the headphones, and I put it in, and uh, Roller Coaster was playing from this album. And so I, from that moment, I realized, wow, this is great. <laughs> um, and so I started listening to it, to the whole album. This was before Gone Now came out, so it was his only stuff. Um, started listening to it a lot uh, and just started really diving into Jack Antonoff, which eventually would become an obsession, of course. <laughs> <laughs> just a small obsession. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually discovered uh, a couple of the songs by way of the Love, Simon soundtrack, the movie from 2018. Although I'm sure, you know, I had, I think I had, become friends with you before the movie came out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had probably heard the name Jack Antonoff in passing, probably from him. And uh, But yeah, I loved the movie so much that I picked up the soundtrack, and of course, Wild Heart and Roller Coaster were on the soundtrack and featured prominently in the movie. And th those are the first two songs on this album, so they got off to a great start in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I just ended up really enjoying this. I had never paid attention to Jack Antonoff before. Well, I think I had... I had obviously heard Fun, uh, a couple of their big singles from their se second album, on the radio and stuff, and I thought they were pretty good, but didn't really glom onto them until I realized that there was the Jack Antonoff connection, and uh, now I've got a Steel Train album and a few of the projects that he's produced and all that stuff. So, and yeah, I've really come to uh, uh, come to appreciate Jack Antonoff and uh, his uh, talents and production talents and songwriting talents and stuff, and yeah, and also. One thing about this album in particular is that it really kind of symbolizes my friendship with Noah. It's like every time I see this CD or the LP, I have them both on my shelf. It's like the first thing I think of is this guy here. <laughs> and uh, and that's the goal, to make sure everyone thinks of me when they think. <laughs> you're off to a darn good start. <laughs> and uh, I've also felt a couple of not only connections to Noah, but a couple of connections to Jack Antonoff in a way. Um, he lost his sister... Uh, to, I believe it was brain cancer, 
uh, and I lost my sister to a uh, medical condition with her brain. Jack was the older sibling. My sister, my sister was the older sibling, and my age difference with her was greater than Jack's age difference with his sister. But still, it's when you lose a sibling that the, the uh, you feel it, and you kind of tend to relate to anybody who else who has lost a sibling. And so, uh, particularly the song "Like a River Runs." Uh, right before we list, we did this video, I uh, listened to the album again, and hearing the chorus of that song made me misty-eyed. And just, you know, reading the lyrics and, and listening to them, just, uh, I can really identify with them. And, uh, but also just the, the catchy tunes and melodies and stuff on this album are just great. Uh, obviously, Wild Heart and Roller Coaster are two big, great songs. And uh, Noah's not fond of Shadow. I really enjoy Shadow. That's one of my favorite songs. And, of course, I Want to Get Better is one of the best songs on the album. Who can't relate to, you know, wanting to improve yourself or change something about yourself even though what you were before before isn't necessarily a worse person, but still, you know, it, it makes you want to get better in your own eyes, at least. You know, who can't relate to that? And uh, Wake Me is a very pretty love song. It's one that I could imagine being on a uh, wedding DJ's playlist, possibly. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the one song I'm not crazy about is uh, I'm Ready to Move On and Wild Heart Reprise featuring Yoko Ono. Just, uh, just can't get into... Uh, I'm not sure what caused him to put this on the album and to, to bring Yoko Ono in on the album, but hey. And of course, the 80s influences. I'm an 80s kid, so it's huge for me. And I can hear a little bit of uh, Springsteen influences on one song. I think that was Wake Me, where I heard just a little hint of Springsteen. Just all sorts of 80s influences and just I'm done with a 2010s twist, which is great. And so, yeah. Favorite songs and favorite things about the album? <sighs> uh... I mean, it's hard for me to narrow it down to favorite songs because it's definitely an album that I've listened to a lot, um, and so uh, favorite songs have always changed. Uh, that being said, Like a River Runs, of course, I'm going to echo on what Tom says because that's, uh, I mean, that's probably my favorite song of all time, period. Um, oh, really? Yeah, it's such a beautiful <clears throat> song. I think that instrumentally there's such a story being told, which is something that um, I think Jack does really well. Um, he's being a producer. He's really uh, he's really conscious of like the instruments he plays and how they are arranged. Um, and I think that that song, I mean, it tells the story that the lyrics are telling through the music as well. Um, and yeah, it's it's a it's a hard one to get through for sure. Not one I listen to that often because it is just so um, heavy emotionally. But. Uh, uh, one song that Tom didn't mention, You're Still a Mystery, that uh, that song that a... is uh, another one of my favorites. It's uh, very upbeat, one of the more danceable tracks, and it definitely, uh, it's a, it's just a happy little, happy little love song, very, uh, uh, I think there's a lot of, like, innocence in it, um, something that uh, you see not always in Jack's music um, because uh, he does like to draw on his more negative experiences because um, even Roller Coaster, one of the more ha happy songs, does have some of the more uh, darker tones to it as well. Um, but of course, yes, I mean, it's hard for me to really pull out that many that I just, uh, that for me, of course, I'm ready to move on Wild Heart Reprise is probably a lower moment. Um, though I don't probably dislike it as much as Tom does. Overall, it's a fine song, um, but it just, uh, Yoko Ono can't sing. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Yoko. <laughs> um, I also really love Who I Want You to Love. Uh, that's one that's grown on me a lot later. Um, after getting into Bleachers, it's one song that has some really excellent instrumentation. Um, it's it's where a lot of the instrumentation gets a chance to shine more, like uh, in the guitar solo of the song. Uh, and I really also love uh, Reckless Love, uh, also a really excellent song. Uh, all of these songs, like I said, not the ones that I initially really got into. I mean, I feel like I was in the I was in the camp of uh, Roller Coaster, Wild Heart, I Want to Get Better being my favorites. It's just one of those things that I've listened to it a lot listen to uh especially those three a lot just because they're the the big ones um so now taking time to continue to dive into it but honestly this is one of those albums that i just i do love all the way through and especially because it is such an intensely uh 
memory filled album um, for me because of course of what I said this is the album that got me into more modern music this I mean because uh, by discovering this I there was a a music festival nearby. I didn't end up going, but I wanted to go, and I so I was looking up all the bands that were there along with Bleachers. Um, that's how I got into Fits and the Tantrums and Cage the Elephant. So uh, it, it, it's a it was a big gateway for me. But I mean, especially like I said, it just has those memories. It reminds me of uh, the summer when it because I found out about this album near the end of I think my freshman year of high school. So. Um, that summer just has a lot of memories tied to it with this album. Constantly listening to it, it's, it this song just makes me think of summer and uh, my friends, and especially the friend that introduced me to this uh, album, who is who I'm fortunate to get to have as one of my uh, grooms people uh, during my wedding. So I, uh, it's not only a great album, but one that just holds a lot of memories and nostalgia for me. Look at you upstaging me on talking about the production and the instrumentation and this stuff. And I just say, I like it. Well, I've had a lot of time to, to, so, yeah, to think about this album. Absorbed it much more than I have. Yeah, I've yeah. been with this album since probably, I'm pretty sure it was 2015. So six, six years that I've been listening to this album. So, And another connect, I mean, it doesn't really have much of, all, of anything to do with the album itself. But one thing that connects it is I wouldn't find out. Obviously, I didn't know about this album until 2018, but it was actually released the same week as Mandatory Fun by Weird Al Yankovic. So what is it? Kind of another funny connection. Yeah, what are the odds? That, <laughs> one of what his are... favorite albums and one of my favorite albums released on the same week. Yeah, that so, is very odd, but yeah. yes, great. And Mandatory Fun is a great album, too. So <laughs> right. I knew I liked this guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I guess that's about it. Uh, yeah, by the way, Check out Noah's channel. He doesn't post a lot of videos right now anymore. Uh, he hasn't for a, a year or two, but still, it's a fun channel to, to look at, to look at all the old videos. He used to do excellent, excellent music reviews, album reviews and whatnot, and of course, his album diaries videos. Excellent. Uh, he is, I believe, the first channel listed in my uh, favorite channels in the description below. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. Uh, well, yes, and do check out my channel um, for fans of Tom because we will actually have a video on my channel. Oh, that's right. um, we're Duh. doing a collaboration <laughs> video. So, um, yeah, so they're, they're sister videos. Um, so, yeah, check, uh, go check out my channel, at least for him. Uh, and, yeah, if you want to see me and my fiance be stupid, check out Take a Walk <laughs> series. Those were fun. Uh, but, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I am always happy to talk about bleachers. Like, I, I know I go on and on about them, but at the end of the day, regardless of how, uh, I mean, I know, critically have never received a lot of praise. I would definitely defend them critically, but on an emotional level, I've always had, I, I have such a deep connection to this album and this artist, and it's just one of those things that uh, really important to me. Um, I I mean, this, it's a pivotal thing in my life, and I'm, uh, this album especially, um, though I, I even consider Gone Now a better album, this album will always hold that place in my heart of what opened my eyes to new music, and uh, strengthened my bond with that friend um and uh just an album that really uh has moved me and changed me in a lot of ways yeah and it strengthened my bond with this friend <laughs> so anyway yeah that'll do it for this my inaugural edition of album diaries i hope you enjoyed this video if so hit that like button and share it with your friends and give me your thoughts questions suggestions or constructive criticisms in the comment section below also, scroll down to the descri description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, remember, life's too short to be a music snob. <laughs>